when you are an established company, internationally known, and with a reputation as one of the big players. Admitting that you have a problem can be hard. But future-proofing your company by adopting cutting-edge pricing technology and being not only a market leader, but a company that places the distributors first through transparency, fairness, and a deep understanding of rebates and incentives, then this is not a weakness, but a real strength. For modern companies like Bosch Thermotechnic that rely on a network of wholesalers and distributors to provide the level of service and goods that the modern consumer has come to expect, it's essential to have a rebate-based program that not only incentivizes, but is transparent, fair and reliable. But when your rebate program turns into a black box lost in Excel, then it's time to do something. Bosch Thermotechnik, based in Wetzlar and Vernau, Germany, can trace its history back to 1886 when founder Robert Bosch started his company in a Stuttgart backyard. With climate protection at the heart of everything it does, it offers its customers throughout the world solutions for their room climate, domestic hot water and decentralized energy management needs. The company invests more than 170 million euros a year in R&D which is no less than you would expect of a company whose slogan is Invented for Life. My name is Daniel. I'm working for Bosch since 11 years now. And since three years now, I'm working in the role as a group lead, team lead for um, wholesale bonus, uh, rebate and condition management. And the sales operation team I'm in is basically the back office for our sales reps um, that are providing on the heating products uh, in Bosch German market. I'm Dennis Gleis, I'm working uh, for Bosch since 2018 and I'm responsible for the maintenance and uh, payout of rebates. So we are selling to our um, wholesalers and then to our installers. So we have this uh, free step distribution and therefore I'm responsible for the conditions. My name is Vivian, I'm 29 years old and I'm an intern at Bosch Thermo Technology and I'm responsible for the processing and the maintenance of the rebate agreements and for the um, for sales activities and the calculation of them. And how would you sum up Bosch Thermotechnic's vision? Bosch Thermotechnic provides climate-friendly heating system which can be easily connected in a smart home. For us, uh, climate is the most important uh, driver that we see for the coming years uh, because we want to provide our customers not only uh, cost-efficient measures for getting the warm um, house and warm water, but also um, it must protect the climate in the meantime. Do you know what was the point at which Bosch Thermotechnic realised mm. there was a problem and wanted to do something to make that situation better? Actually, this software was just part of a bigger project, so we want to improve our pricing structure and then we need a software which support us to do that because um, the last years we were just working with SAP and it was not easy to maintain the conditions, also have like an overview to get uh, one view which customer gets which conditions. And therefore we were looking for a software which can help us to get this overview and can help us to make our customers happy. We were currently in the phase of uh, evaluating how we can make better contracts with our wholesale customers and uh, we started studying what is uh, not working out well at the moment. Uh, and when we did the analysis, we found that we had lots of things we needed to calculate by hand. And at the same time, we did not meet the custom requirements uh, because usually they want their money, let's say, one month mm -hmm. at latest. And it took us like a quarter to actually make the payments because it took so long to calculate it. It took so long uh, to make it transparent to the customer. And we had lots of questions because they didn't understand the outcome of it. And how important are distributors to your business model? And for us, the distributors or the wholesalers are, well, our main customer at the end. Yeah. And they provide our products to the installers. Yeah. They are basically um, making logistics work so that end customers can actually buy the product in the time they need it. Of course, uh, if the house is getting cold, you need a replacement urgently, and that's, that's a common use case for us. So we need to have partners in the field that are close to the customers. 
they are very crucial because uh, we only sell our products um, through our wholesalers. So we don't sell direct to our installers, we sell it over our wholesalers and the wholesalers sell it then of course to the installers. And therefore we have to uh, provide attractive conditions to our wholesalers so they can make a good price for installers and yes, that the product should be affordable for all of us to get like a Bosch heating system. Okay, and how do you incentivize your distributors and wholesalers? Especially we make good conditions for the um, climate neutral products, so because we want to uh, motivate them to buy these kind of products, so then everyone can be part of uh, be a climate hero. <laughs> and therefore we uh, push like these products, for example, like heat pumps, um, which are very climate friendly. And so we make, especially for these kinds of products, good conditions for our wholesalers, that the wholesalers can also make good prices then to our end customers, for example, as you and me, that uh, I will be motivated to buy these kind of products. Well, basically the wholesalers get targets based on product groups or market activities they do. So if they sell the right products or if they make the right campaigns with our installers uh, out in the field, uh, then they're getting paid out the bonus. Or also if they pay um, in the right period of the year. And because we have like a seasonal curve and we don't want everybody to order on 24th of December, of course. Yeah. So actually our key account manager are going uh, out to the customers and they're negotiating um, these conditions once a year and then one contract is valid for one year. And then of course you have to put this data in the system because Bosch have to build accruals right to pay out the, the rebates at the end of the year. And that is, was before really difficult to do that in SAP because the conditions are getting more and more, let's say, heavier and not so, so easy to maintain. And um, therefore we need a flexible structure to maintain these conditions. So first step is the negotiation between the key account manager and the customer. And the second step is then to maintain the conditions to build accruals in the system. And then during the year we are doing the payouts then. How was the problem manifesting itself? How were the distributors feeling about the problem? What was the relationship like? Basically, when um, the guy who did all these payments before, we started with my group doing it. Um, everybody knew the guy and uh, the customers would call us up and say, OK, I don't understand why I'm getting the money, but I know this guy's doing it right. Yeah? So basically, it was based on the personal connection that they believed in the numbers. Yeah? But they also told me they had no chance to actually, well, uh, calculate it themselves. Yeah? And we're talking millions they're getting. Yeah? So this was more built on trust, but not uh, built on transparency and uh, figures and numbers that you can really trace back and understand yourself. You know? And am I right in thinking that this man was about to leave? Exactly. He was close to retirement and uh, basically uh, also many of these things, how it was done, was just well written in his head, but not documented. And for us as Bosch also it's important to say that it's not depending on the person itself. Yeah? Uh, the answer that you're getting. Uh, so we need to have a transparent solution which is available 24-7 and giving the same numbers every time you click on it. Yeah. And with this kind of personal contact with this one man yeah. with everything in his head, he's leaving. Before he left, what kind of compromises were you forced to make because of this previous system? Well, the, one of the biggest compromises, as I already said, was that uh, you could not really um, support him doing it faster. Yeah? He was basically dealing the whole system on his own and uh, we lost a lot of time. Yeah? We were not able to pay in, in, in four weeks time or less. Yeah? We were not able to change uh, contracts or make new deals with the wholesale customers because we told them, well, it would make sense to make this kind of rebate, but our system cannot deal with it. Yeah? So we were basically reaching the limits of our own internal structure yeah? and could not meet market requirements at the end. What was the reality? What was the real situation in, in terms of time? Yeah, well, the, the biggest, uh, the, well, main, mainly the payments take place in the first, uh, in the beginning of the year. And for us, it took like the first quarter uh, to have everything done. And then in April, the customers started complaining that they had some questions. Yeah. So at the end, we were not done with the previous year until June or July. And were there any specific business related KPIs that you were not able to measure? using the previous system? Well, we had no chance to actually measure how many payments we could do in, in a certain amount of time. Um, also, it wasn't very transparent for us how much money the customer received at the end. 
because the whole structure was not really, well, there was no real easy way to report what you paid out at the end. So the fact that the man was leaving was the breaking point. But in terms of people deciding that you needed to adopt pricing software, how was that accepted amongst everybody? Was there resistance? The knowledge about the system was leaving due to this re retirement, but we also found that after basically 15 years of keeping the condition logic the same, we needed to change if you want to really well make progress in the market. Yeah. So there was a project in parallel uh, driven by the idea of how can we market our products better yeah. mm -hmm. and focus on new products like heat pumps, for example, or solar thermal technology, which is it was not so valuable in the, in the old conditions. You know? So that was also the second thing we needed to change. And you're right, um, there was of course resistance in, in mainly internally and in for, the, for the sales guys because they were used to the old style of doing it. You know? um, but we had, a, we had of course a good story to tell that we want to make life easier afterwards. You know? So for us the transition was mainly augmented by it's getting easier, more transparent and faster. Yeah, and once we've done that change, everybody will be happier than, than ever. And when you were choosing pricing software, why did you choose PriceFX? We were looking for a partner that would be flexible yeah, and also um, open-minded to basically deal with the complexity that we have in the current contracts with the customers. That was the most important thing and also we were looking for a partner that was able to meet the project go live in time. Yeah? Because basically you need to make it happen on the 1st of January. Yeah? There's only one time in the year when you actually can deal with uh, changing the contract structure. Who was involved in the project from the start? Um, initially, well first we involved um, other Bosch divisions and asked uh, internally does somebody else have the same problems as we did. Um, and we found this, let's say, strong collaboration in exchange with um, colleagues from the auto automotive aftermarket because it seems like they faced the same problems some years ago. So they were involved in the kickoff, and of course, um, we had a project lead from our wholesale key account management. But what was it that was unique about this particular project? Some things that they hadn't faced before? I think, at least for us, it was like the first time that we had really involved. Um, all partners in the project from the very beginning. And also we spent a lot of time with PriceFX to also help us to understand how we can solve the problem. Uh, and we felt very, very good to see that um, we have a partner on board that is, um, well, much deeper into the topic than we are actually. Yeah? And he could give us good advice on um, how you could solve this and how this can be done. Yeah? And this helped us a lot to, to understand that this will actually work at the end. So how does a rebate manager help you in your everyday work? The rebate manager for us is the daily tool we use basically to make, yeah, to make the payments in time and as transparent as possible for the customers. Yeah. And since the introduction, we're, we're starting to also think of automation more and more. Yeah. And also here we made good progress to see that once you trust the system, you can also reduce the manual checking and the manual controls that we had in the beginning. Yeah. And at the end, our goal is that basically this thing runs like a bot. Yeah. It just makes the payments based on the figures you have on the system. And only manual cases uh, need to be treated separately. Yeah. Tell me something about the SAP integration. How crucial is that to the rebate process? That's very crucial because, of course, we have all our orders in the SAP system. So the SAP still, of course, um, is working with the orders. And there have to be a connection now between the price of X, the accruals and the orders because um, each product the customer uh, will buy, um, the accruals have to be built on this product because on each product you get different uh, rebates at the end of the year, right? And therefore it's very crucial that SAP and price of X is uh, working together, of course, otherwise it will not work. So the level of complexity would be difficult to achieve if you didn't have PriceFX and SAP integrated. PriceFX is uh, like our um, flexible front end. Here we maintain all the data, the data is calculated, the rebits are calculated, accruals are calculated, 
And SAPs take the high complexity data, which we calculate from BICX and then uh, yeah, store it like an SAP and just do the regular things, the standard process, build our tools and create a credit memory request. But the complex calculation of rebates are in price of X. When the project started to be implemented, were there lots of emotions? Was it a lot of stress? Was it a lot of fear? Or were people excited about the change? And especially yourself, Daniel. Well, myself and my group in sales operations, we were excited about doing it. Because basically I, I experienced one year in, let's say, the old style of doing it and I didn't feel very well of continuing that. But of course we, we were stressed when we found that it's taking more time to implement than expected in the beginning and we only had this one shot for January to bring it to go live. Yeah. And that was the stressful point, yeah. And how good is the relationship with the sales team in terms of the benefits that they're seeing from price effects? They get the information more fastly from us and that's the result actually. And then they know, hey, what, what's happened? Are you uh, three people more or five people more? And then I'm saying, no, we just have a new software and we are now faster because of that. You spoke about there was some resistance from the sales people that were so used to the old system. In terms of change management, how did you handle that? For us internally, the, the IT topic was easy because we found very soon that it's, it's just working much better and faster and easier for us. You know? Then you don't need a big change management you know? yeah. if the new system is making life easier from first day on. Using pricing software, what benefit does it bring you directly to the role that you perform? So actually it's our daily business to um, maintain and pay out the, um, the rebates and we save a lot of time and um, we can meet the requirements of our customers because it's really angry to have like a customer on the phone um, who's asking about the rebate and you say I have no clue <laughs> what you're talking about right because I am not able to type in very fast an SAP customer number or searching for rebate types so I have to look like in paper sheets or in Excel tables or stuff like that. And with price of fix, I just type in the customer name, for example, or the rebate name, and I'm able to answer the, this question right on the phone. And that's a, a big advantage, I think, we have now. What I see is that in the last two years, since we have the, the, the software in place and all the tooling, uh, we're getting more and more questions with regards to uh, the profitability and how to calculate products for the future and how much money we spend on which part of the of the sales chain, so to say. And this is something that basically comes together in our department, yeah. And naturally we now we're getting the questions and we're trying to answer that step by step. Did you have any problems working with price effects during the project? Were there any points where you felt that the project wasn't going the way you wanted? We already spoke about some of the uh, out-of-the-box uh, functionality that you expected? Well, PriceFX was starting so so quickly on developing stuff. Yeah. Um, we were not used to it. Yeah. For our internal IT, often you, you have have a lot of lead time until some, th some things are started. Yeah. And on PriceFX we found that if you give a first input, then the next day they already did some implementation on that. Yeah. And we learned the hard way that you need to be very clear on what you want to do Otherwise, you're doing it twice, three times, four times, five times. Yeah. So for us, um, the biggest issue was that we need to make our minds more clearly about what we want, or you're getting developments that you don't need at the end. Yeah. So that was one thing that we noticed. Yeah. If you're not working with a fixed uh, requirement sheet and just doing it on talking, uh, as it's well as it's uh, normal for an agile project then you also run the risk of doing things that you don't need at the end because it's not working out or not thought through. You know? So that was the only point where we wasted time for everybody. And how has this experience influenced your current processes? Well, for the current processes, you basically adapted that we said uh, we implement less things and we spend more time on refining it before we actually say start working on it. Uh, and my feeling is that we're getting better every year, a little bit. Yeah. That we save time for ourselves and also for price fix yeah, to only bring these things to life that we actually need. Yeah. So, project implemented, go live, starting to see results. Comparing the current process to what you had before, what are the positive changes and what are the negative changes? 
Well, the positive changes are as expected also in the beginning that we save a lot of time and still can do the same amount of work. And also we've seen a high increase of uh, contracts, so we, we acquired new customers we need, to, we need also to pay out and this is still working fast and faster every year. So that's positive. The second thing is that we have no problems to dig out um, all the documentation why we did the payments. And the third thing is that of course we, can now, we have now more time to focus on improvements uh, and not only working our hours on doing the daily work, yeah, which is also of course a benefit for the whole team. Yeah. That's the positive sides. Um, I can't think of any negative sides at the moment. So in terms of like distributors, what's their reaction now? How do they feel with the current process? Are they satisfied? Are they able to sell more? What are the positives they're experiencing? Mm -hmm. The feedback we are getting from the customers that they um, now receive the payments as they would have expected the whole time before. Yeah. How would you feel if you were told that you could no longer use price effects? I would <laughs> feel not very good, right? Because then I know I cannot meet the customer requirements again because we need too much time. So before price effects, we get every day like 20, 50 emails and they have to wait like two weeks. Now with the price of X software, we are able to answer these questions within one or two days because we are able to go to the system and find the answer in the system, right? And this was not possible without price of X because this data was not crunched. We have no dashboards uh, in SAP or stuff like that. And therefore, um, I would feel really sad without <laughs> this software. Um, yes, that's frustrating without mm -hmm. working with the software because if you know you can't uh, meet the requirements of the customer, you getting also angry. <laughs> well, I don't know how they would feel, but for us at the moment it's just not possible you know, because we cannot do our work without the solution we have in place. And I would ask them, okay, bring me somebody who can do the same thing, um, but right now, yeah, <laughs> I cannot switch. So it's become an integral part of what you're doing. And is there anything that you can currently do because you have price effects that you never imagined that you would be able to do at the initial stages of the project? Well, one thing we did not dream of in the beginning was actually to make like automatic payments yeah, where you only have to click and you rely on the numbers and the rest is done automatically. Yeah. This is something we did not expect in the beginning because for us it was mainly talking with the key accounts, um, trying to see if the numbers are correct, making a manual control and check, and all these things just went away after one year of using it. Because we are confident that it's just doing the job. Yeah. So many steps in the process have been automated. Exactly, yeah. Okay, and for the distributors and the wholesalers and your customers in general, how do they feel that now they have a system that's reliable, automatic, and importantly, transparent? In the beginning, I think they expected this to be that way all the time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They were just wondering why we did not have this before. Yeah? Can you tell me something about the benefits that you've experienced from moving to the cloud? Well, actually moving to the cloud for us was uh, driven by the fact that we were reaching the boundaries of, with our existing um, on-premise solution. Uh, we found that having more than one year of data in the system, everything was getting slow and, well, also, it was very costly for us uh, that we had a, uh, well, not proper sized fixed solution in place. And, and for us, moving to the cloud speeded up processes like, I think, factor three or four, depending on what we looked at. And at the same time, we could also save a lot of money for us as a division. Yeah? So it was the best decision ever made. Yeah? And all this um, Potential problems you've seen with data security and stuff that was sorted out with a clear process and at the end everybody was happy. Yeah? Yeah. I experienced the benefit that it is much faster and easier to make changes in the system and in the calculations and um, it's more transparent. In terms of measurable results, what would you say is the most significant result that you can actually measure and say, yes, that is a positive change? Yeah, we, we put uh, in the beginning of the project some, uh, some key figures in and said what we want to achieve with that. And one point was that, of course, you wanted to achieve a reduction of the process time. 
and this was working out at the end. So we basically reduced the time that we need to 50% of the previous working hours or main days that we needed. And now it helps us to, well, to, get, to actually work with the current figures we have in the system. So even though we have much more customers to deal with, we still um, are able to do this without having more people in. And the second most important factor was that we wanted to reduce the manual calculations to like 0%. And when we started a project, like 40% of the calculations were still done with manual inputs. And we don't have this anymore. Yeah. The time saving is mm -hmm. one big result because we have now 50% more time when it's come to a payout rebates. And the second thing is uh, the transparency. Transparency is very good now, and because uh, that is crucial um, also when you're talking about to answer the questions of our customers, right? Because if you are looking in Excel sheets or like in papers under your desk, it's difficult to answer these questions right in time. And therefore, I think these two things are the most important things. Thinking about the current situation now, the system's up and running, what do you think you could do next? What would be your ideal next step to make things even better within Bosch Thermotechnic? Well, the things that we are working on at the moment is, of course, to bring um, process steps in the system that are not digitalized yet. You know? But that's for us mainly approval workflows that we do by hand or in different systems at the moment. And also one thing we did not solve yet is uh, that the contracts are still written on paper. It's PDF, it's digital, but still um, you have to translate this somehow into the system. Yeah? And this is still done by hand at the moment. Yeah? And that's the most important step for us to get even better than we are today. And how do you think the price effects will help you achieve these goals? You just learn from the past. Uh, we always found a way of making things work at the end. Yeah? If we thought together about possible solutions.